Hello. I'm Mark. And I'm Joe. And this is Instant Finish. Finish big instantly. Finish, <laughs> finish rather fast. We did just finish rather fast because we just listened to the next instalment of Once and Future. This is number three, A Genius for War with right. Terry Malloy. Davros. As Davros and Sylvester McCoy's turn as the Doctor. Ha ha! Ah, oh my god! What? Stop playing turns on my tits! <laughs> Anyway. How long have you had those in there for? <laughs> so we've just oh, listened. Put up with on a daily basis. <laughs> we've just listened. <laughs> <laughs> what yes. have we just listened to? A Genius for War. <laughs> no. What did um, you think? Not exactly what I expected. Oh. What were you expecting? I was expecting a bit more of an epic -y time war story. Oh. And I've not listened to a lot of the actual time war yeah, other big finish bother. stories because they just do not interest me. And it's just terrible. a lot of Daleks chat and Gallifrey chat and arguing and explosions and things. This was a more contained story, a smaller story than I was expecting because just that cover and just the mention of the, you know, you've got Beth Chalmers on the front as the... Uh, Belkin, who was in the one in Susan's War, Bad I think, Charlie. and they, Ken Bones they, as the general coming they back. They couldn't do an anniversary special about dragging <laughs> Beth Chalmers out of retirement, could they? <laughs> this is a 190th Big Finish release. So I was expecting a bigger, more epic mm. TV style story, and so I was very pleasantly surprised that it wasn't that. Oh. What do you think? I didn't like this at all. <gasps> in fact, I thought this was the weakest one so far carry on because i i i like yeah i thought i was waiting for a very clever twist so the, the general premise is i won't too too many spoilers the general premise is davros reaches out to the time lords and says i will help you win the time war if the doctor comes and saves me and brings me back and i kept saying to you well he's up to something he's up to something like and then he comes along with this big brilliant plan to create a race of time war Daleks. So it's essentially cribbing from Chibbers, because it's exactly what he did with the Cyber Lords, isn't it? It's a mix mm. between Cybermen and Time Lords. And frankly, I think that was done a bit more excitingly as well. Because you had Dalek mutants regenerating just like the Cybermen regenerate mm. in, in a thing. Um, and that moment never came. That moment where I was like, okay, so he's, he's plotted out this massive strategy and he's just going to take down the Time Lords and the Daleks. And it's not. In the end, he like off, makes an offer to the Time Lords then he makes an offer to the Daleks. Then the Daleks come in and take him away and then he just ends up basically where he started. And I was like, well, what was the point of that? I see what you mean, yeah. But I still liked the smallness of it. And okay, the story wasn't really there. It did actually, when he mentioned the hybrid stuff, the, oh, the mention of the hybrid stuff me. made more sense to me than the whole of the TV series did. It I did. really liked that. No, no, it did. And the whole thing about the hybrid in series I nine. Mean, I did, being, yeah. You wait till Luke Malloy listens to this. I he know. loves I that the moment they said the hybrid. He's going to be all over this <laughs> shit. Um, the reckon no, I mean that's a bit desperate, isn't it? No, I, I liked how I liked how that. No, but I like that. It made more sense in think? this than it did in in everything else. Do you know what um, my biggest problem with this is? Yeah, the time war is just so boring. But it wasn't that time warry. That's it what was. I didn't mind. They were talking about the time war it, the whole time. Yeah, I know, but not as much. And what but... did it become in the end? It became in the end just a load of Daleks screaming at you, just not as I as feared. Not as much as it could have been. I didn't mind it this time. I actually quite like this. Actual, maybe my favourite so far, actually. Oh, you're mad. But what it didn't have, like you say, it didn't have. It wasn't the epic thing. It wasn't a good twist of a story. But actually, what it didn't have was the Doctor and Davros going up head to head. Yeah, that was epic, completely missing. Because, like in the the Colin Baker one, Davros or something oh, like that, I was brilliant. expecting. Yeah. Because this would have been more of an epic. You've got that big scene between the Seventh Doctor and Davros just never happened no he's basically just there 
Um, actually, there was one clever moment. Can I just drop a spoiler? Well, you have already. Serves you right if you're going to listen to this before listening to the story. But I did think, for once, the actual the fact that the Doctor's degenerating is used in the plot. Finally. It is a plot point. And I was like, okay, okay, that's, that's good. That is good. But in terms of the overall arc so far... We still three know in, nothing. Again, like I said, it's just treading water and till. But at least, yeah, it did use that I, well, as a know, plot point. Shitty that was excuse. So Mr. McCoy goes, oh, yes, well, I seem to have stabilised. It must be my fear of fighting the Daleks again, which and means also, I'm not degenerating. I'm like, what? We didn't... Uh, Sylvester McCoy is actually quite good in this. No, he was terrible in this. He, but he wasn't there too wasn't, over the top as he could have been. There wasn't I a... I felt like he had maybe read the script just before. I couldn't, I couldn't hear him reading it off the page as much as sometimes he wasn't bad no he was terrible i'm sorry there wasn't one line reading he gave that made me think he understood a word he was saying there's one point where he goes you know to have me as your ally would be good enough but to have me as your enemy i was like why is he talking like that of an energy (laughs) (laughs) he was awful i'm wondering if he should just give it up now Uh, no i I don't know i I was just because it was just a and can i say i don't even think terry malloy was that good in this but he wasn't given the material to be good usually he has a a really good speech a really good moment doesn't he that um like like the Colin Baker one, Davros. Like maybe I think in the one you remember that bit ones, where Colin Baker is talking to uh, Bernard Horsfall, Wendy Pavery, and then yeah. suddenly Davros comes over the speaker, yeah. going, "I hate to interrupt you all," yeah. and that's when he starts murdering everyone. Yeah, it well, didn't have those those big moments or the big character moments. It just it, but as a story, I was entertained for an hour. It went by. Fairly quickly, I wasn't looking at the clock thinking when's it's going to finish. This is boring. I, see, I, was. I, I was. I wasn't, and I have a little bit for the other ones. So I was. And I, 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 you know I, what I though? It was all right. I think like, it's my problem. It ain't your problem. It's my problem because I just don't like the time war. It's so neither, boring. Yeah, neither do it's I. just time lords versus Daleks, and that's so boring. But it wasn't as bad. The exciting thing about the time war, right, as a concept by Rusty Davis, was that it could be this weird, exciting, like insane warfare. But instead, what it's, happened um... in Day of the Doctor is Moffat boiled it down to the most dullest possible ways time lords and daleks shooting at each other like star wars and then you got beth chalmers Ooh. in the middle of it <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> oh she's terrible as well yeah so i don't think the actor oh and no. that fellow who played bosco that was some of that well, worst there wasn't acting really anybody else in i quite like that it was a smaller cast though and that it wasn't as that it was more contained. I, I, that's, maybe I was just expecting it to be so terrible with <laughs> big time war, Daleks shouting, which wasn't as bad, and Sylvester McCoy being terrible. Because they weren't all that terrible, maybe I'm like, I have, we have only just finished listening, maybe I'll, I'll rethink. But at the moment, I'm yes, pleased my favourite you enjoyed so far. It. I, I thought the last one was way better than this. It had better dialogue than this. Mm. It had a more interesting story. It had something to say. Well, this didn't have anything to say well, about anything. Matter. No, it didn't. No, it, it ended didn't, up uh... with Davros in the Lake of Mutations on Scarrow like swimming that. about. And I'm like, <laughs> well, what? How was he swimming? Was he swimming or was he in a little pod thing? Or well, something? it sounded like he was. <laughs> a... I know he sounded like he was underwater. <laughs> I was like, I was trying to work out. He's not swimming around. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and no. um, I've not heard Sylvester McCoy for a while. No. I'm hoping this ain't his standard of acting. Mind you, I mean, he is a bit dangerous, yeah, but... isn't he? He can, go, he can go from being fantastic to being terrible. But they gave him enough minimal that he was okay, he could get by. They didn't give him pages and pages of script for him to get his tongue round. And what's weird is because the Doctor's degenerating, but there's no story specific reason for these Doctors to be in these stories. It feels like like they just pulled a Doctor out of a hat and then told a story around him. And so then you get no Steve reason... Lenoir does a little bit of each one. At the beginning, <laughs> oh, I'm still here. <laughs> no, no, and you get the Patrick Chan one, don't you? Oh, yes, oh, what's going on here? Oh, no, that sounds like my Stephen Noonan, doesn't it? <laughs> um, just noisy. Mm. I don't I, I think you. Could, it it surprised happen. me because I think Jonathan Morris is a great writer, mm. but and I think this has been this sold on the constrained. Oh, I think this has been sold on the very dramatic premise of like Davros in the Time War, which is an enticing idea. But that's that's been done in the Paul McGann Time War, hasn't it? I've not heard that yeah. one. And it's effectively like it is just Genesis of the Daleks. Davros creating a new genetic species. 
and it I know, will go I thought there'd be a twist where he's like, and they will be called the Mechanoids. Or something like that. I thought we were going to get, I did think we were going to get something like that. I would have been, been all over that are the shit. Hybrids. That would have been amazing. <laughs> but no, we, we just didn't go that far. But it's okay. I think it's okay. As part of the overall, though, just another step towards yeah, but whatever's going to happen. The actual once and future plot, yeah. Still hasn't progressed. No, no, I know. No, it hasn't progressed. It hasn't started. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're it three started, fucking yeah. hours in, but and it ain't started I don't yet. Know, but we don't know. There might be some things in this one with where Davros sends up with this hybrid idea that we could be oh, hopefully right. in wow. the last one. We'll have if a bit of all of this. Script... We'll have the hybrid. We'll have the curator. We'll have Sarah Jane and the monk. They'll all be <laughs> coming out of the Lake of Mutations. Oh. It'll happen. It'll happen. There's going to be a messy finale, I'll tell you what. All those elements. And then Beth Charmers will be there being, I've been in Big Finish this morning. I will sort it out. No, playing Rain Robinson. Or whatever, like, Rain. Creevy. Creevy. <laughs> anyway, well, um, we shall look on forward to next you month. Know what, what can I just say? How are Carter's music? They all just sound the same, don't they? It's that sort of... Well, yeah. <laughs> Look, it weren't great, all right? Mm. But he thought it was great. Yeah, and he's cuter than me. So listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should look forward to next month with yeah. Colin Baker. You like a Colin oh, Baker? Oh, thank God. No, wait. Hang on. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Colin Baker, Jackie Tyler... Harry Sullivan and Lady Christina. I mean, fuck me. Bring it just, on. You know, like, you, know when you pull on. letters out of a Scrabble bag. Yeah. They've got characters in there and they're <laughs> pulling them out. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, Big Finish. Keep on that randomizer. And we will continue to finish. Instant... instantly finish. <laughs> <laughs>